Well, hello. Thank you all for uh, joining us today, and thank you, Netcom, for allowing me to come and speak. Um, I assume this uh, this is generally an IT manager crowd. People, most of you work in IT and are in sort of management positions. Is that right? Uh, okay, <laughs> it looks like that. Okay, well, that's that's sort of the way I built the uh, the discussion today. My slides will take me about ten or fi uh, fifteen or twenty minutes, probably, to get through. And I do have a little bit of time, and I have a couple colleagues with me as well from Microsoft. Um, we'll be more than happy to take some questions um, or discussion or, or comments from you. Great video lead in. Um, uh, so our discussion um, that we've um, prepared for, we'll start out by talking about that IT skills gap that was uh, discussed in this video. Uh, leading up to this discussion. So we'll talk a little bit about that, what we're seeing from Microsoft um, around the world in terms of <laughs> skills in the market and, and the demand for those skills. Also talk about training and certification and how that addresses that gap to some extent. And then I'll also talk about um, the changes that we've made at Microsoft in our certification program to better address the needs of the market today. So there's tons of studies around the skills gap. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out um, is that the IT skills, when we think about IT skills and the needs in the market, we're thinking about generally IT projects, IT departments, and driving companies forward in terms of how they use technology to run their business. But there's another component of IT skills that I think often is overlooked and the, the studies are showing is that more than 50% today, more than 50% of jobs out there require some level of IT skills. So these are jobs, vocational jobs, professional jobs. Today they require IT skills. But in the future, almost all of them will require some level of IT skills. So that's something to keep in mind as you're thinking about whether you're in IT or not, um, about your workers and the skills that they'll need to be successful in their jobs. And then of course, around IT itself as a profession, um, we are seeing a significant um, gap between the supply and demand of those skills in the market. We're seeing that globally. It's especially true here in the United States, and it will grow. So all the studies we're seeing says that in the next five to 10 years, we will continue to see more and more jobs in IT requiring skills that we don't have in the market. So we really need people to push forward on their skill sets um, get the training they need, and a lot of times that means training, not necessarily education, to be able to be relevant in, in the market. Uh, this was an IDC study showing that it, between now, basically, and 2015, there will be an additional, over additional 7 million jobs <coughs> opening in the IT field. And these jobs don't necessarily look like they look today. So that's another piece that we need to be considering. And for Microsoft, that's very, very important. There's a couple of phenomena at play, one of which is cloud computing, which I know you've, you've talked a little bit about today. Um, big, big deal for Microsoft. Um, and also, it's just a shift in the industry that's going to require everybody to retool, everybody in IT. The other phenomenon is around devices and bring your own device, and I'm sure you all are seeing that already in your environments, and how do we make sure we're taking advantage of those devices in the IT uh, world, and, and then of course the applications that go along with that to make sure we're enabling those devices for business benefit. So between those two phenomenon, there's a big need for new skills in the market. In terms of application development, um, we, we estimate about 10 million worldwide, about 10 million application developers out there who are professional, who make their living developing applications. But there's about 100 million people developing apps around the world. So interesting kind of phenomenon to think about. I know uh, application development is already a difficult skill to find in IT. And uh, if you think about these additional 100 million people that are out there as hobbyists developing applications, could they be skilled further to become professional developers? And right now, being a professional developer, this is our CEO, Steve Ballmer, Microsoft CEO. Being a professional developer means making some good money. So it's an, it's an awesome time to be an application developer. We need to really 
hone those skills so that they can be more applicable to the IT world and to driving business value. So we talked about the seven million plus jobs that we, uh, that we see coming into the market in the next three years by 2015. The other thing to think about is there's an expectation of about 100,000 additional companies that will be created by 2015. IT oriented companies around the cloud and around applications. So more than ever, it's important for computers, scientists, for engineers, for IT managers, for uh, project managers, for business analysts, anybody in the IT field to increase um, their skills to better suit the needs of the market. So I thought I'd talk a bit about certification and how we believe that will uh, help people um, be successful in IT. And what we found was 80% of IT managers believe that training and certification drives success, not only in, in terms of how they address the business needs successfully in their IT project, but also how they, how they meet deadlines. So 75% of the managers interviewed in these studies said, with certified people on my project, I'm more likely to meet my deadlines. So fantastic uh, endorsement there of certification and training. The other thing I thought was interesting about this, these studies was 84% of hiring managers say that um, certifications is a measure not only just of the person's skill set, but also of their ability to work hard and achieve goals. So something I think people don't necessarily think about. They think certification, okay, shows a technical skill that, that I need in my project, but it's also an indicator of somebody who drives hard toward a goal. I think that's important. So the top two boxes are around that same, the same issue around skills that are hard to find in IT. Most managers, almost 100% of the managers say hard to find and I'm, and I'm, um, I'm looking for new types of skills. The two bottom boxes I thought were interesting because it's around why does somebody get certified? What is the reason that someone goes to the effort, take the training, it's a significant amount of effort and energy. Why do they do it? 60% say they do it because it helps them lead to a new job. Almost 60% say it led to a salary boost or a bonus of some sort. So those are some of the reasons behind it. But some of the other reasons that we found in talking to certified people is that it gives them confidence. When they're certified, they know they have the confidence to succeed. And that's important, I think, as well in terms of performance on a project. So again, lots of studies out there showing the importance of certification and how it's valued by the IT managers. And if you are certified, you're a part of a community. And for Microsoft, that represents over six million people worldwide um, who are certified in Microsoft technology. Uh, we are the largest certification program out there and the most widely recognized program as well. So of course, training, is very, very important. Um, and of course leads to certification. So I wanted to just show some, some ways you could get training in Microsoft technology or train your staff in Microsoft technology. Obviously we're here at, uh, with Netcom and they are a learning partner, Microsoft learning partner, gold learning partner. Um, they use the um, official curriculum from Microsoft. So that's great because you know then that the, the curriculum is from the source. Um, and you'll get a good quality course from companies like uh, Netcom. They can also provide value-added services around you know, training your staff um, and putting a plan together to help you achieve the training that you need. And then the last thing I wanted to point out is around software assurance uh, training vouchers. So, so those of you who work in companies that have enterprise agreements with Microsoft, you qualify for free training that you can, you can execute here at Netcom and at other learning partners as well. And then of course we offer, as Microsoft, some free and for fee um, additional resources around training. So Microsoft Virtual Academy is a great place to go to look for videos that you may use just to supplement your skills or your team could use. Um, you, can look, you can find that on Microsoft.com, WAC Learning. 
And then our Microsoft Press um, books, you can find Barnes & Noble or Amazon. We have free e-books downloads as well as four fee books that you've probably already seen. So one of the things we did at Microsoft about nine months ago is we reinvented our certifications for the cloud. So it was a pretty big undertaking and it was a couple years in the making. Um, but what we wanted to do was make sure that when you as a hiring manager hired somebody with a Microsoft certification, it was cloud oriented. So you knew that that would help you take the next step uh, toward the cloud successfully. So we wanted to make it more relevant to the cloud. And also we wanted to make it more relevant to solutions. So versus uh, in the past, our, our certifications were much more technology, deep technology oriented of a single technology. What we found in talking to IT managers was it was, it was more important that people understood an entire technology solution and that that would make them more relevant and especially in cloud computing. So we, we broadened the skill set requirements for the certifications. We also introduced recertification on a cadence that makes more sense in a cloud computing environment because we don't have significant releases. The releases happen um, on a cadence and so the recertifications will also be on a uh, cadence. And then we applied additional rigor because we heard from hiring managers that the Microsoft certifications didn't always indicate the level of skill that we really needed it to. So we increased the difficulty of the tests, the rigor of the test, the requirements of the test, that and now also requires a deeper skill set in the technology areas that they're pursuing. So I think you can rely more on the certifications than you could in the past um, in the new wave of certs that we've just released. So this is a, um, this is how it, it stacks up now. It's much more easy to follow. It used to be quite scattered and lots of ways to enter the certification program and many paths you could take through it. Now it's much simpler. Um, there are basically three levels. The associate level is sort of the first IT job level. Um, it's, it's one to three exams. And it is a prerequisite for the Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert, MCSE or MCSD for developers. Those two levels are basically the, the destination. That's what most 99% of the people will strive to achieve is that MCSE or MCSD level. And then for a few people who really want to differentiate and be the cream of the crop, um, we have the Certified Solutions Master. And that's a very significant training uh, program and certification program for those few people that um, want to be masters. And then I did not point this out, but this is a, we just uh, launched this yesterday, Microsoft Technology Associate. It's a foundational um, vendor independent technology sort of uh, assessment that we just introduced sort of more like the CompTIA um, level certifications. So MTA, so we did just announce it this week um, I don't want to talk too much about it, but just because since you all are IT managers, it's probably not, it may not be quite as relevant for you, but one of the things that we've been talking to IT managers about is using the MTA, which has um, 11 tests associated with it, things like database fundamentals, networking fundamentals, um, security, uh, phone development, uh, you know, web development, those sorts of topics. What they're using the, the MTA for, they're planning to, is for roles like project manager or business analyst, um, people who are, are talking technology, working with technologists, but don't necessarily understand the technology as well as they need to. We're looking forward to seeing what this will do. It's been in the academic market now for a couple of years. And it's very popular. So we're hoping that in the, in the commercial market that it will also play a, a significant role. As I said, the MCSE, that's, that's our pretty much our flagship um, brand and acronym. You will find if you go out into DICE or Monster or wherever you search for jobs, you'll find um, quite a few job openings for MCSE. Um, and it is the number one recognized brand that we have out there in certifications. 
So I do believe, I think when you, when you hire an MCSE with the, new, with the new cloud certifications, you'll find um, the person is very well qualified to help you get to, to the cloud. So thank you for your time. Um, I hope you will get started uh, taking a look at our certifications if you haven't before, um, and look at those for the relevance to your, to your employees and yourselves. Um, you can find all kinds of information about Microsoft and training and certification on Microsoft.com WAC Learning. And I, that's all I have. And